Hello. Today we'll be introducing Nate CSS for Android. You should have downloaded the demo application from the website, and I've imported it into Eclipse on the left, and I have an Android emulator on the right. On the website I talk about the exact dimensions for this emulator. I keep it this size because it's the same as the iPhone, which makes cross-platform development a lot easier. The only files of interest in the demo app are the login activity, the CSS file, and the form layout. First things first, let's run the app. So you can see here it's come up with Facebook branding, and this is all configured in the login activity here. So native CSS is integrated in these lines. Feel free to play around with them. I talk about them in more detail in the docs. So first thing we need to do is to enable live updating. Live, live updating allows us to edit this CSS file and to see the changes come up on the right here. The live editing is enabled in the login activity. This block here enables live editing. And we need to connect our local CSS and our assets folder to this URL. I recommend using the following command. I'm in my folder here, the assets folder, and you can see there is the native login CSS. So if I run this command, a local CSS file is now being hosted, and I can refresh this in my browser and it comes up. You can see here there's lots of activity because the app is already accessing the CSS file. It does this every second, and that's defined here. Now, if we want to start editing this code, let's get rid of it all. So you see there's been a big change there, um, and only a few bits of the Facebook branding are remaining. Now, following the online, online documentation, I'm going to paste in some CSS to get us going with. This introduces the style guide. Now, we call it a login controller, not a login activity, because this enables it to be used over multiple platforms. The IDs here can be used as CSS selectors, which makes it very quick to style your view. If we have a look at the logs, we should see the style guide has been applied here, as well as on the view on the right. This gives us a little bit more information. You may be wondering where we pull this information out from. This is all defined in the form XML. So if I load up here the graphical layout, it will look slightly like the view on the right. This roughly corresponds. This is different because this has Facebook styling still applied. Let's copy over some more CSS from the website. This applies a reset rule which hides all the style guides and then only re-enables them for the input. This is a reset rule pattern. First you remove everything and then you re-enable only what you want. This is a way to avoid the stale state we see here from the Facebook branding. Ideally we like to use reset rules because it stops us having to restart the app. Now if we wanted to remove all this Facebook styling we could apply reset rules to all this content. But Let's restart the app. You may note this is the first time we've had to restart the app. So now we're back in the room and we've got a very clean app with no Facebook branding. With It also has only the completely necessary CSS selectors visible. This will form the basis of our CSS styling. So if I paste in a bit more from the website, we can quickly identify the view at the back with a dark grey colour and the form with a lighter grey colour. Now, I'm quite lazy, so I'm going to now just copy in the entire Facebook branding I've done earlier. Feel free to do this more incrementally yourself. And hey presto. This section here adds the Facebook logo at the back. We can remove this section and see what happens. 
reasonably responsive. We've got a form section here which which we saw earlier. Let's move this around a bit. How about let's shift it back to the top. Down a little bit more. Maybe change the width. Back to what it was. We can change the border width and to emphasize the focus on each view. So there's the focus. Thank you, that's all for today.